If you get your kid that for Christmas, you you deserve to burn. You deserve to be destroyed by Krampus. What up everyone, it's your boy FlozenG, bringing you a special holiday version of Tear Up, and this time we are going to be ranking Amazing Christmas Movies! I'll admit, some of these I'm going to know better than others, some I haven't included at all because I, one, probably haven't seen them, and two, if I did see them, remember next to nothing about them. So yeah, but I hope you enjoy what I have for you today. Let's get into it. The rankings for this video are as follows. God tier, holiday classic, stocking stuffer, bah humbug, and cancel. First one we have is a Christmas story. This one is told in the point of view of little Ralphie about a certain Christmas he had in, I don't remember what the fucking, I don't remember what grade he was in. Do I care? Not especially. But basically it's about a Christmas he had that was just fucking bonkers putting it lightly, with a bully with yellow eyes, not properly represented in the movie, a obsession for a blah 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 something something BB gun, which will shoot his eye out, and oh boy, the pink bunny pajamas. If you get your kid that for Christmas, you, you deserve to burn. You deserve to be destroyed by Krampus! But as a movie itself, it wasn't one of my favorites, so... I don't really know. I, I think I'm going to put it midway in Stocking Stuffer. Again, that's just my opinion. Next up, we have a movie called, I believe it's Arthur Christmas? Arthur's Christmas? Arthur Saves Christmas? It it's one of those. Arthur is one of the sons of Santa Claus. And, like, what happens in this movie? Oh, yeah, if I haven't mentioned it already, this, this video is going to contain spoilers. Fair warning. But, yeah, Arthur is one of the sons of Santa. The... Santa has another son who's lined up to be the next Santa, but he's not exactly as caring for kids as Santa really should be, and that's where Arthur comes in, because after this current Santa got finished delivering all the presents, they missed a child. <gasps> so Arthur assembles a small team to go and deliver this present to wherever this child in the world may be. Do they succeed? Do they not succeed? I don't know, you'll have to watch the movie. But as a movie itself, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Again, probably a midway thing. There's been better, there's been worse. Alright, next up we have a classic, but I, I kind of prefer this version, I don't know why. We have A Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey. If you don't know the story of A Christmas Carol, it's basically this dude, Ebenezer Scrooge, who's, well... He's a real meanie pants, especially around the holidays. Because I guess Christmas never really worked out for him in the past. Plus, he's kind of a greedy fuck. So he gets haunted by three spirits. Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas yet to come. To teach him the value of Christmas. But will he learn about it? And, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is the woman Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey's done a few holiday things, now that I think about it. But yeah, the story of A Christmas Carol, that is definitely a holiday classic. Pretty sure anybody can agree with me on that. Alright, next up we have one I believe was a Netflix original movie, I think. We have The Christmas Chronicles with Kurt Russell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't completely remember the story of this movie. Um, All I do know is that... There is this child who was making like videos and shit of Santa trying to prove he's real. And I guess things kind of go haywire and Santa gets in a bit of trouble. Point is, a lot's going down and they have to save Christmas. Depending on who you are, this could be one of the best Christmas movies or one of the worst. That's honestly your opinion. In my opinion... I, I'm kind of leaning downwards, I'm, I'm afraid. Alright, next up we have the movie Elf with Will Ferrell. This is a story of a baby who 
on one Christmas Eve, accidentally wandered out of his crib and into Santa's sack. That sounds really bad if you take it out of context. Either way, they arrive back at the North Pole. The, the little baby crawls out of Santa's sack and, oh, what do, you, what do you know? He ends up being taken in by the elves and raised in the elf world during the life of Christmas time. But then he has an epiphany that he might not be an elf and that he's actually a human. So then he travels to the human world to find his family. And let's just say, it's, all no, it's not all sugar plums and gingerbread houses. And a lot of shit hits the fan. With a certain elf. If you know what I mean. I will say, this is one of the better Christmas movies. But I'm not going to put it up in God tier. I need a little bit more. Next up, we have Ernest Saves Christmas. Alright, now if I remember the story of this one correctly... Um, Santa, he's getting a good bit up there in years, and he has to find someone to replace him. He ends up finding that person. I believe he took a cab to get to wherever he was trying to go, but he left his sack in the cab. And who was driving that cab? None other than Ernest! So Ernest was trying to track down the man and return his sack to him. So they can eventually find and create the new Santa. But it's just one shitstorm after another. I mean, it's a good one. It's not one of my favorites, so I'm gonna have to put it up in Stocking Stuffer. I feel, I feel like Midway is a bit of a fair judgment for that one. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Next up, we have Jim Carrey's You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. By far one of the top Christmas movies ever. And I will tell you this, it's either, it's either this Grinch or no Grinch. No Grinch could ever top the performance of Jim Carrey. None. The Grinch is an outcast from Whoville who tries to destroy Christmas, trying to steal Christmas from all the regular Whovians? Is that, is, is that what they were called, Whovians? That sounds right. But in doing so, he might have learned a little something about Christmas himself with a little help from a certain little Who by the name of Cindy Lou Who. I could be a Dr. Seuss writer! But yo, how the Grinch stole Christmas, Jim Carrey? Yo. It's a fucking God tier movie. If you don't agree with me, you are not a true fan of Christmas. No, you are not. Next up, we have the childhood icon of Christmas Kevin McAllister with Home Alone! I mean, what would Christmas ever be without these two idiot burglars and this genius troublemaker kid? As the name suggests, his family ends up going on vacation. He gets left home alone accidentally. And these two have been scouring the neighborhood, trying to get into the house to steal from it. Kevin, he must defend the house at all cost. But will he survive the night? One of the best Christmas movies to ever exist. If you disagree with me, you are a psycho. All right, next up we have the sequel to Home Alone, Home Alone 2, lost in New York. It's a sort of a similar situation where Kevin didn't exactly get left behind, but rather when they were going to the airport, he might have gotten on the wrong plane and ended up in New York. And by coincidence, two burglars, Harry and Marv, just so happened to uh, kind of broke out of prison and kind of fled to New York and are kind of planning another heist, which are kind of going to bite him in the butt. The fact that these three are in the same city, you know it's going to be good. And I'll admit, I was a bit skeptical whether Home Alone 2 would rise to the standards of Home Alone 1. And you know what? Exceeded my expectations. I am fully willing to say that they are both God-tier movies. Next up, we have a... We have a good bit of an older movie. There are very few black and white movies I actually enjoy, and It Happened on Fifth Avenue is one of them. I can't exactly recall the whole story, but from what I know, there's this quote-unquote drifter bum, that's probably not the right term at all, who lives in this house that's owned by this, I guess, corporate billionaire named um, Michael O'Connor. That sounds right. 
because during the winter, O'Connor leaves his home in New York to go down to, I think he has a home in Virginia, maybe? So, while O'Connor's not there, this guy, he decides to use that space and live there. But one thing leads to another, there are a lot of people on the street who kinda need his help, and eventually, it gets a little overcrowded. But, for some reason, O'Connor decided to come back early. And is all hell going to break loose? Who knows? Maybe the really rich Mr. O'Connor, second richest man on Earth, might learn something or two from this bum. But you'd have to watch it and see. I really do like this movie, and if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's a holiday classic in my opinion. Next up we have another quote-unquote classic, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life follows the life of... Oh, fuck, what was his name? I'm forgetting. I think it's George Bailey. I think that's right. Starting with his young childhood into his now adult life, where in the most recent part of his adult life, it's just one shitstorm after another. One shitstorm after another. Kind of like the current life right now. And he meets this angel who shows him what it would have been like if George was never born. And believe me, a, a lot a lot of stuff changes. And a, I mean a lot of stuff changes. After which George reevaluates his values. And I guess he becomes a better man. It's not one of my favorite movies. And if I had a choice not to watch it during Christmas, I'd probably choose not to watch it. I'm not going to deny it's a good movie though. And I don't really see the appeal of this next one. We have Miracle on 34th Street. And I'll be honest, I watched this movie a good few times. I, I couldn't remember the plot if you had a knife to my head. I could not remember it to save my life. And the fact that I've seen it a good amount of times and couldn't remember the plot to it. Sorry, buddy. You gotta be the first canceled boy. Next up, we have such a fucking great one. We have the Polar Express. Despite its nightmare animation, I've probably been binge watching this since early November. That is how much I love this movie. That is how much I love it. Tom Hanks is like half the fucking characters in this movie. It starts out with the young hero boy who is starting to doubt the existence of Santa Claus and just doesn't know what to believe until this magical train comes out of nowhere and is going to take him to the North Pole. But there are many trials and tribulations along the way. He might meet a ghost. He might be at the front of the train during a huge downfall. He might get lost at the North Pole. But seriously, if you have not seen this movie, you need to fucking see it. You actually have no idea just how much love I have for this movie. You have no clue. My love for it is so strong. It must go in God tier. It must. Next up, we got another classic of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I think this is one of the very first stop motion uh, Christmas movies that was made. Obviously by Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. If you don't know the story of Rudolph, he was born with a glowing red nose who kind of got rejected by all the other reindeers. They wouldn't let him play any reindeer games, those big meanies. But eventually, they need him to save Christmas. Rudolph, he could have just said, Nah, love it. You won't, let me, you won't let me play the reindeer games. Who needs Christmas? But nah, Rudolph is bigger than that. Rudolph is a true Christmas icon. He could just said, screw you, Christmas. You mock me just because I'm different than you. Proof. You mock someone who's different from you, it could end pretty badly. Still, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, this, it, it really is a holiday classic. And belongs in such tier. Next up, we have another stop-motion Christmas movie. Santa Claus is coming to town. And I will say, this one is probably my favorite stop-motion animation um, Christmas movie. It's a story about a baby who I guess was left on the Burgermeister's doorstep, who I guess was abandoned by their family, and then abandoned again by the Burgermeister, and ended up living ended up living in the mountains with this family called the Kringles. You can kind of see where it's going. They adopt him, name him Chris, Chris Kringle, and they teach him how to build toys, but they live up in the mountains 
There's no one for the. There's no one that the toys can be played with. So one day, when Kris Kringle's a big, strong man, he delivers the toys down to the people of Somber Town. But the Burgermeister is not happy. And when he meets him, uh, all hell breaks loose. I mean, there's also a penguin, a warlock, and a teacher with some curves. Ain't that a fantasy? But yo, for real, this is actually one of my favorites. It is a god tier movie. You cannot change my mind on that. Next up, we have Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. Now, I will say, out of the trilogy, the first one, I didn't appreciate as much as I did the other two. I don't know why. Apparently, in The Santa Claus, um, Santa was making his usual rounds. Then, this guy, Scott Calvin, happens to wander outside, look upon his roof, see a Santa going in. He goes, hey, hey you! The Santa falls down from the roof, and he disintegrates, leaving his coat behind. Then, this guy went and put on the coat, and then he suddenly became the new Santa, according to the contract. But then, the end of Christmas movie, wouldn't you guess it, all hell breaks loose. But I will say, out of the three of them, this one was the least memorable to me. I mean, that's just me. Next up we have The Santa Claus 2. The next year of Christmas is coming up, and for, for some reason, Santa starts to de santa ties. Something like that. Which is occurring because whilst there is a Santa Claus, there's no Mrs. Claus. So he must get married. Ugh, and he only has about a week to do it. Go to Vegas. There's probably some poor soul there. But no, he goes back to the human world to find a wife. But the, the elves are going to be suspicious if he's gone. So what does he do? The obvious solution. He creates a plastic toy version of himself. Ugh. Again, that out of context can also sound really bad. Either way, he creates the toy to watch over the elves. But the toy kind of gets power hungry. Is that toy going to ruin Christmas? Will Santa be able to find a wife? Who knows? Watch the damn movie. I will say, I do like this one more than the first Santa Claus. I don't know what it is that makes me like it a bit more. Next up we have the Santa Claus 3, the Escape Clause. This one brings in a new character, one of my personal favorites, Jack Frost. I don't know why I appreciate the characters that are always like as cool as ice. Long story short, Jack Frost come upon Long story short, Jack Frost comes across some information that could help him become Santa Claus instead of Scott Calvin. And he takes advantage of that information. Will it work out for him in the end? I do not know. Either way, the Santa Claus 3, the Escape Clause. I don't know why, but that one is my favorite amongst the three. That one is my favorite, but I can't rank it a god tier. It just doesn't rise to the standards of the other ones in god tier, in my opinion. And I think this is where I'm going to end my rankings. I have been Flozum G. This has been ranking Halloween, Halloween, holiday Christmas movies, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. 